All right. When most people think or talk about culture, what come to mind are actually things. Great art, architecture, uh, literature, philosophy, these kinds of things. But those things are not culture. They are the products of culture. Culture is a living process. The ancient Greek city of Athens had a vibrant living culture that generated many cultural products that we still value today. But that culture is not producing anything new because it is no longer active. There are other ancient cultures whose projects we are enjoying today, tonight, in this room. These living cultures passed down from early human history, give us beer and wine, bread and cheese. These cultures happen to be microscopic, but they function and react enough like human cultures that we can draw certain comparisons from observing the process. If you leave grape juice out on a counter, it will ferment. You will get living cultures. You may not have the result you desire. Uh, until someone figured out that grape juice turns into wine only under certain conditions, this process seems random and possibly uncontrollable. But there is a recipe, a reliable formula for achieving the results we want, and it involves the careful nurturing of living cultures. And like the yeasts and molds that give us beer and bread and cheese, there are also reliable recipes for nurturing and guiding human cultures, and human cultures require five basic conditions or ingredients to work best. I won't try to pronounce this name, but this is our friend the yeast, these are individuals, not a culture, not enough yeast, no beer. Your bread will not rise. Um, the individuals will do their best, but it's not a culture. This is a culture. Number one of the five conditions that create great culture is critical mass. Critical mass of creative thinkers. Think New York, Tokyo, L.A. So many people of so many kinds that culture is nearly inevitable. Uh, you can see that different cultures create different products. Even within a particular specialty, as with cheese, so with music. These are different kinds of cheese cultures, all different cheeses. These cities all have music cultures, but the sound and style is different in each place. Number two of the five required elements is competition. We excel when we rise to a challenge. And if that challenge happens to include prestige and a big wad of cash, so much the better. Uh, many of the great advancements in the arts and sciences, both in our distant past and in our present day, are the result of competition among very talented people. There's the Eiffel Tower again. That was a competition. Uh, the third thing that we need to grow cultures is mentors and patrons. Now, mentors are like the opposite of dementors. They breathe life and vitality into those around them. Uh, and like yeast, multiplying and dividing to become uh, a bigger culture, mentors are constantly growing more of themselves, growing the culture, making sure the next generation happens. Patrons. Uh, patronage is critical to the cultural process. If we want beer, someone has to buy the barley and the hops and the barrels. Uh, like brewmasters, patrons mind the process, adding resources as needed to get the best results. Number four out of five, freedom. Freedom is like oxygen to the cultural process. We live in a free country, and we often forget that no matter where we are in that country, we enjoy a kind of freedom that is not available everywhere in the world, and it makes our culture powerful. Economic prosperity, the final ingredient. Each of us in this room has access to the kinds of resources that once would have stunned emperors. The world's libraries and theaters in our pockets. Refrigerated stores of food from around the globe in every season in our home. The ability to support yourself does a lot for growing culture. Culture can be dangerous too. Not everyone likes beer or what happens when people drink it. Some folks would like to do away with it. Some people are lactose intolerant. Some people are gluten intolerant. Whatever, not everybody wants the same results. Um, but the fact is, culture can be unpredictable and sometimes volatile. Any home, home brewer can tell you about incidents like this. And unplanned cultural explosions are a source of worry for risk-averse governments and institutions in human culture. Uh, sometimes the unplanned growth of a culture can threaten the very existence of the status quo. We no longer conduct mass executions to stop its process, but we do still try to contain it. Uh, other, more positive cultural explosions happen too, all around the world. Um, like in Rio and Brazil, or New Orleans here in the US, imagine the consternation this causes authorities. Hundreds of thousands of people in costumes carrying weird stuff. Uh, should we sacrifice joy for safety, and will we? Yet celebration is in our nature. This photo was taken locally, but the culture that makes it happen came here from a long way away and now grows and thrives here, and we enjoy its products every day. Uh, my point is culture is an active process. It's a verb, and it specifically means to look after or assist the growth of by labor and care. 
From beer to public art, we have a recipe for success. Go now and culture the world around you. Thank you very much. Thank you.